We'll now move directly into session two, entitled Children's Environmental Rights. And this is a global initiative conducted under the auspices of the United Nations Special Rapporteur on Human Rights and the Environment, in collaboration with partners, including UNICEF. A brief overview of the Caribbean Children's Environmental Rights Initiative will be presented, including how the Youth Summit discussions and call to actions will contribute to the Caribbean Children's Environmental Rights Initiative work at the global level. I will be your facilitator for this session. And at this time, I will introduce to you Mistress Faith Marshall Harris, a member of the United Nations Committee on the Rights of the Child. Ms. Harris, over to you. Thank you so much for inviting me um, to be part of this important summit. It's been wonderful this far. And I want to say that uh, in my role as a member of the United Nations Committee on Rights of the Child, what I just experienced with the CIPRIA makes it all worthwhile. Um, the work that we do in um, supporting and defending and protecting the rights of children because uh, activists like her really demonstrate to us the importance of ensuring that children um, enjoy these rights. A lot of what I'm going to say has already been said, so I will skip some of what uh, of that so that we don't have too much repetition. But I just want to point out that the I'm a member of that um, body of global experts on um, child rights, which come under the treaty, the Convention on Rights of the Child. And that convention, which is in 54 article, guarantees to children a number of important rights. In fact, the Convention on the Rights of the Child is one of the, one of the few, and I suspect the first, human rights instrument that explicitly requires states to take steps to protect the environment. And that is in Article 24.2, which speaks to the enjoyment of the highest attainable standard of health for every child. It says that state parties should pursue full implementation of this right, and in particular, take appropriate measures to combat disease, malnutrition, taking into consideration the dangers and risks of environmental pollution. And that is where I, I base my remarks. We, in the committee, in exploring and interpreting the convention, recognize that environmental harm interferes with the full enjoyment of a vast range of the rights of the child. We recognize that every child and the convention does this, has the inherent right to life. And the convention provides that countries shall ensure to the maximum extent possible, not only the right to survival, but also the development of the child. We explicitly, in our general comments and our days of discussion, look at and take into account the risk of contaminated food and water, pollution in, their, in all its forms. And we recognize that the status of children's environmental health is closely linked to all the other rights. And in fact, they can't enjoy those rights, that is the right to life, survival and development, food, water and sanitation, adequate housing, education, freedom from exploitation, information, and an adequate standard of living, if in fact their right to a clean planet, an environmentally safe planet, is not guaranteed. So that it is all interconnected and indivisible. We also recognize that the right to equality and non-discrimination it's important also in society in that right because they all children should have access to healthy and safe environment. The looking specifically at 
the Caribbean region, which uh, I have the honor to be from in terms of uh, in sitting on that body, and therefore to some extent is a focus um, for me geographically, I, I need to emphasize that, and I know we heard earlier that we should not keep thinking about what is wrong, but I fear that in this region, and despite the actions of persons like Ashley, and many young activists, there's still a significant portion of our population that need to be convinced that action has to be taken immediately in terms of the careless use of the environment. And consequently, I still need, therefore, to enumerate some of the ills that uh, we suffer and, and remind persons and call the youth to action on our particular problems. One of them is, and I haven't been able to establish the statistics, is that a large proportion of our children in this region suffer from asthma. And we am told that this is directly linked to the poor air quality, the pol air pollutants from grass fires, cane fires, the toxic fumes from vehicles, the burning of household refuse, and of course, Sahara dust. And this has affected to a large extent a number of children who, thankfully, many of them outgrow it, but it does hamper their development. And I keep having to remind persons that children are more susceptible to air pollution than adults since they have a smaller respiratory airway, and which is easily blocked by infection, and they breathe twice more quickly than adults, and they take in more of the polluted air, and their immune systems are not fully developed. Another difficulty, of course, that has been mentioned earlier is our events, our traumatic events, such as hurricane, which displace children, disrupt their education, um, have an impact on sanitation and far-reaching effect actually and we had between 2017-2018 a number of shocks that we suffered. Water is one of our problems and you know water is a magnet to children and we, our children play in bodies of water which are unsafe and of course, children play regardless of whether they know of the risk or, the, or not, because that is what they do. But though their, their unsafe bodies lead to um, the proliferation of mosquitoes um, with diseases like dengue, Zika, and chikungunya. Uh, we also have water scarcity, um, another difficulty uh, because of the prolonged droughts that are now developing through climate change. And so I know that my time is now almost up, but we have, pardon? No, continue, Miss Harris, yes. <laughs> You're a bit <laughs> over time. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. But um, just quickly, I need to say that we want more and more advocacy on these issues because children's rights are under threat as long as climate change is an issue and we do not take greater care of the environment. I want, however, to re recommend that the participation of children and young people is vital. They have the most to lose in this particular battle, so I want to urge them to be fully involved and to take this on as an issue that is very important to them. Uh, it was stressed by the CRC at a recent DGD that environmental harm can and does interfere with full enjoyment of a vast range of children's rights. And therefore, countries have to take steps to protect people from harm. I understand that young people now the world over have been playing a very active role. I want the this to continue, but I want to urge even more people in the Caribbean to take their cue from you. I want, in conclusion, to pay tribute 
to the Ashley Lashley Foundation and by extension UNICEF for bringing this vital issue to the fore today. I also commend the work of the Children's Environmental Rights Initiative. And it's my hope that young people after today, more and more young people will come on board as climate change activists and rights defenders as their voices will be the most potent. COVID-19 has given us an opportunity to uh, press a reset button. So I say to young people, you can use it as a powerful lever for accelerated action. Thank you very much for this opportunity. UNICEF, Ashley Ashley Foundation. Thank you, Ms. Marshall Harris for those remarks. At this time, I'm sure um, the person that I will introduce next would actually echo that message and statement you just presented to us today. And she is a 16 year old climate change activist from Afghanistan, Ms. Sakina Mossini. Sakina, are you on the line? Yes. Great. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Hope you are all doing well. Uh, First of all, thank you, uh, UNICEF and Ashley Leslie Foundation. I'm Sakina Masni, member of Oxygen Action Committee and uh, Fridays for Future in Afghanistan. As we all know that children are the most vulnerable people on earth. According to WHO, uh, air pollution kills 600,000 children every year. Air pollution causes different types of sicknesses and it can also impact on child's development and other diseases. I want to share a memory. When we went to the internal specialist doctor, uh, he was so busy with the patients. Uh, so I asked him uh, most of the time, children came here with what kind of problems? Is it related to the climate change or not? So he answered yes, most of the time children came here because of respiratory disease and most uh, and some of them are well, uh, and some of them are very critical, so they die before they reach to the hospital. WHO research shows that environmental risk constitutes 26 percent of all deaths in Afghanistan, and the reasons are old cars bringing coal directly uh, to the heater for, uh, and burn them at homes and burning plastics and non-filtered fossil fuels, etc., are affected biodiversity. Women and children are at particular risk of exposure to a household as they stay home as they stay at home more than men. Also, according to the health ministry doctor interview, he said from 11,000 deaths, 8,000 of them are children. Last winter, as the world knows, that Kabul was one of the most polluted cities. Air pollution is the, mo is the major part of climate change. We had a campaign on climate change. Uh, we took banners with slogans, uh, and uh, our slogans were, were in three languages, English, Dari, Pashto. And uh, slogans were, air pollution is killing us and stop burning fossil fuels. We were two, me and my friend, Navid. We walked to the different places, like in front of uh, presidential palace uh, and in front of uh, Wizrak Barhan Mosque and Tulu TV. We had different reactions from the people. Most of them uh, appreciated us and some of them, And some of them can, came and asked us, why are you doing this? What does it mean? And some of them just laughed with ignorance and said to us that with two people, you can't do anything. And, and, just, and you are just wasting your time. And also we had another campaign uh, on trees with a, large, uh, with a large number of people. And our slogans were, if you want, if you want to breathe, plant a tree. All these campaigns were for spreading awareness that trees are the only solutions for tackling climate crisis. Before we started this campaign, we all together 
we all together discussed about the campaign we thought we should do something new we should do something new and different to attract more uh, and more attention of the people then we decided to make three costumes by recycling the bottles and other stuffs we made all the materials ready then we started to strike and this campaign was for four days uh, in these four days we almost had covered all the areas in kabul each day we were distributed in groups and went to the different parts of kabul in every group four or five of us just took banners and two were with the plant trees costumes and um, four or five were with the short tree costumes and uh, two of us were distributing um, the flyer uh, because those who missed our campaign they can read the flyer they were amazed of the tree costumes and our work because it was something new and different and they liked um, our work most of them took selfies and gave thumbs up the smile and really got the attention of the people but we but but the bad luck is here that in afghanistan most of the people are not aware of the situation if they are aware they are still living their normal life and burning those plastics and unstandard fossil fuels because they are poor and uh, during our uh, classes we had another campaign yeah, we were in groups each day one group went to the mosques camps and schools uh, and give presentation for awareing them that what we are facing today will be worse in the future uh, in 2017 war killed 3483 people but pollution killed 26000 people and 8000 of them were children i want to say that war can kill a group of people but climate ch- but climate kill everyone thank you thank you very much akina for that powerful and strong statement at this time i'll hand it over to the caribbean children environmental rights initiative Hello everybody. Um I think there might be some Johnny. Hi, hi Ashley. I think there might be some slides. I'm hoping there are. Yes. Perfect. So, hello everyone. Um my name is Jenny Pegram. Um I'm here on behalf of the Children's Environmental Rights Initiative. Uh, and it's a real pleasure to be here today and to be supporting um this consultation and the summit. Um I'm part of the secretariat team for for SERI um but we work with a, a large number of of partners as you can see on on the slides here. So I wanted to speak briefly about who we are, what we're doing and how today's um summit and the ongoing hay campaign can contribute to that work and also how you can get involved. Um so next slide please. I'm not able to switch the slide. Thank you. So this is just a bit of background and I don't think we need to go into this in depth because we've heard from from many other speakers but um obviously climate change is a, a huge preoccupation for us. Um but actually there there's you know a vast array of other forms of environmental harm as well and as the WHO has found more than one in four children under the age of 5 are losing their lives every single year as a result of avoidable environmental impacts. That's 1.7 million children under the age of 5 every year. um and despite this uh, sort of disproportionate harm that consistently emitted from climate and environmental uh, decision making and action um despite the fact that they obviously feel incredibly passionate about the issues and uh, have proven time and again how they can be powerful agents of change um they're also least empowered to exercise their rights to information to participate on these issues and to access justice um or remedy when when they've been harmed as a result of environmental problems 
Um, so we, we see this problem, we don't see it as, a, as just a moral problem, although obviously it is, um, but also as, as uh, Mrs. Marshall Harris has outlined as a fundamental child rights issue as well, um, given that the, the vast majority of governments in the world have signed up to the Convention on the Rights of the Child, protecting their rights. Um, so we saw all these issues and yet despite this that there's uh, still continues to be a lack of awareness um, between uh, environmental decision makers and communities working on those issues and those working on children's rights issues um, and really saw that there's a, an enormous gap that needs to be filled here to, to inform states on what their commitments are and what they should be doing. Um, so next slide please. I think this, yeah, so this is who we are. So under the auspices of the UN Special Rapporteur on Human Rights and the Environment, David Boyd, who you saw speaking in the, in the fantastic video earlier, um, we're a global coalition of, of many actors um, from, from various uh, sectors, civil society, UN agencies, and others, um, working to secure children's right to a healthy environment. We want to, to secure formal recognition and implementation of that right. Um, and we, we do that by focusing on a number of, of strategies. We want to empower children and youth themselves um, to raise awareness and build capacity, to convene networks regionally and internationally so that, that children and other stakeholders can work together on this issue, and crucially to inform law and policy to make sure that it reflects children's right to a healthy environment. Um, next slide, please. So just quickly to run through our, our key activities um, and uh, in this context, and I'll speak a little bit later about this, this is really for everyone, this is open for everyone to be involved in, but we particularly encourage children that are, and youth that are watching this to, to look up our website and there'll be details at the end um, because we, we obviously are seeking a broad participation. So our, our, uh, one of our key work streams is hosting regional and global consultations, much like this one, a unique intergenerational dialogue um, to discuss what the key problems are, what the key challenges and solutions, opportunities and best practice models are, bringing together children and um, stakeholders from uh, civil society, from academia, policy makers, technical experts. Uh, we've had uh, the Committee on the Rights of the Child members attending these. Uh, we really try to get as many people in the room that understand and are working on, on uh, relevant issues to bring them together to, to build capacity and understanding and see how we can take forward joint solutions at regional and global level. We empower children through those. We have capacity building workshops in advance. We want to make sure their voices are heard in those um, contexts by, by decision makers themselves. Last year, we had a consultation for Latin America and the Caribbean um, in Colombia, but we're thrilled to be uh, increasing and enhancing our um, sort of inputs from, from Caribbean um, perspectives today. Um, we also, and it's missing from the slide, we also hosted a consultation in East Asia Pacific that was held in Indonesia. And this year we will have regional consultations for North America and for Africa as well. Uh, next slide, please. We also have a digital consultation to ensure that, you know, beyond those children in particular that can attend the, the consultations, um, you can provide your, your inputs online via our online poll. Um, and I have a number of, um, you know, as, as part of the Hay campaign, we've been promoting the poll and we've had some fantastic responses to that, to that poll, which I'll get to in a bit. Um, but these poll, these, these poll results, these messages from children, we use them everywhere we can, um, from the UN level, from the UN Special Rapporteur um, on Human Rights and the Environment, um, giving messages to the UN General Assembly from children, as he did last year, through to the Human Rights Council discussion last week, um, in the UNFCCC, in reports, we use these, these messages and ultimately we'll, we'll be um, using them to inform our sort of ultimate goal to secure children's right to a healthy environment as well. Next slide, please. And uh, finally, the, another key work stream is, is around guidance and advocacy. And this really draws on the other two that we've talked about, the consultations, both regional and online. We want to enhance policies and action that fulfill children's right to a healthy environment to make sure children are at the heart of environmental decision-making and policy. We have a lot of initiatives at global and regional level. And um, here on the right, you can see um, some pictures. This is from COP25 last year. Uh, we, we, we were involved in a high level event that was um, uh, co-hosted with Youngo and with UNICEF um, and chaired by Mary Robinson where a new intergovernmental declaration on climate change, children and youth was launched. 
um, we are co-custodians of that and it sets out a framework for child rights based approach to climate action. So I'd encourage everyone to look at that on our website um, and to speak, you know, advocate towards your governments to sign and to get involved in, in advocacy that we'll be taking forward to COP26 as well. Um, on, on the bottom right, you have a picture of Juliana, who's an incredible 15 year old um, youth activist from Colombia, um, who participated in our consultation last year uh, for Latin America and the Caribbean. And she spoke recently last week um, at the Human Rights Council on children's, right, um, children's rights and the environment and gave a very passionate um, call to action. Um, and Seri, um, along with a number of other organizations also launched a joint call to action to governments um, in the Human Rights Council, uh, setting out you know, seven, seven key areas that they could be advancing on to make sure that children enjoy their right to a healthy environment. Ultimately, we're working towards a new global charter on children's rights in the environment. Um, that's ambitious. We want to secure um, some sort of international recognition, whether that be a UN resolution, a UN declaration, um, based on the inputs from children all over the world, including children and young people that are on this call today and that have participated in the Hay campaign. Um, to make sure that your voices are heard by governments and, and that your rights are respected and that climate action, climate policies, environmental policies and action respect and, and place your rights that, at their heart. Um, so next slide, please. So just quickly, these are some of the results from the poll um, that we received from the Caribbean. Um, we had a good response from, from around 14 um, islands and overseas countries and territories, I think. So this was the question, what environmental problems concern you the most? As you can see there, harm to animals and plants and climate change came out on top, but a num number of other issues were also raised. Um, I thought it was interesting to see how it varies across different countries. Um, and, and we'll put some of these results in a bit more detail up on our website, but to see that, you know, in Trinidad and Tobago, plastic pollution seemed to be more of a concern, for example, whereas in Belize, there was a strong sort of uh, concern about harm to animals and plants. San Lucia really, um, emphasized climate change and uh, Dominican Republic looked at air pollution. Puerto Rico was quite evenly mixed. So those are just a few examples, but I, I always find it fascinating to see um, you know, the kind of responses that children are coming forward with. Next slide, please. And this is uh, the question from the online poll. What measures are most important, do you think, for empowering children to address environmental issues? And here consistently, um, you know, across regions, we see uh, children really want environmental education for all. And th this is a fundamental right. Um, as Mrs. Marshall Harris pointed out in, in the Convention on the Rights of the Child, it talks about um, education on environmental issues. Um, unfortunately, this still isn't being uh, respected in many countries around the world. So, you know, we need to listen to children's voices on this. And the, the other, you know, key priority is, is that children and young people's uh, views are taken into account on environmental issues. But as you see, there's other options um, as well. Next slide, please. I won't go through these. I hope the presentation will be available online afterwards and we'll certainly, certainly put it on, uh, on the Surrey website as well. But we, we always get some fantastic messages from, from, um, from children and youth on the online poll and um, the Caribbean uh, responses were no exception. So there's a, just a flavor there. Um, next slide, please. So just to wrap up, um, how can you get involved? Join our action network uh, by going to our website, signing up for the newsletter, Taking the online poll, um, you know, we've, we've had responses that I've presented, but of course we're always seeking more inputs, please, you know, it takes five minutes, so please, please um, do go there and, and fill in your thoughts and your messages for world leaders, as, as I said, um, we use them at every opportunity and they will build towards this global charter that we want to develop. Um, follow us on Twitter and don't hesitate to reach out to us um, with any questions or anything else. Thank you. Thank you, Joni, especially the Caribbean Children's Day right? Environmental Rights Initiative for coming on board and supporting this initiative. And I really believe that everyone must work to promote and secure recognition of children's rights to a safe and healthy environment. So thank you to all the presenters who participated in the Children's Environmental Rights Session. And Joni, you, you have actually concluded session two.